In this HVAC training video, I'm going over the JB Cormax High Flow Valve. So this is a valve core and port assembly all as one. And so you can't remove the inside guts of this port. And in fact, you wouldn't need to. It's not like a standard valve core where it only opens up a tiny little bit causing restriction. The whole object of this is it's high flow, meaning that this opens up so much surface area down here to where you can pull a vacuum or pull a recovery and you won't have a restriction because it's such a, a large surface area that's opened up. And you commonly find these in HVAC package units out in the field. I also wanna show you in this video what the inside of this looks like. Uh, but in this video, we're also going to be replacing this. Even though we have pressure in here, there's a tool in order to mount this onto the Cormax high flow valve in order to replace it without losing any pressure. To put this into perspective, here we have a quarter inch port and a valve core compared to a Cormax high flow valve assembly. And so when you have this little valve core with the stem pressed in, it's gonna open up a tiny little uh, gap down here to allow air or refrigerant through. So this is typically installed in the port. And so that's gonna act as a restriction if you're trying to do a, a vacuum or recovery. And that's why we typically remove them using a valve core removal tool. Whereas this Cormax high flow valve right now, this one is shut. And so we don't, we're not pressing in on the top stem here and this time we are. And so we have a, a hose end valve core depressor pushing in on the stem and it's opened up this entire area down here. It's much, much larger in order to pull air or refrigerant through than something like this. And so when you have a Cormax high flow valve mounted into a Cormax C and that's either brazed or silver soldered into a pipe, you're just gonna have your hose end pushing in on the valve core depressor in order to do a recovery or a vacuum. So there's nothing to remove on the inside. So here you have a cut open Cormax high flow valve assembly and you see that there's a spring on the inside and that's always holding the, the stem out towards the end of the port. And so that's gonna always hold closed this little gasket assembly. But when you press in on this with a valve core depressor on the end of a hose or fitting, it's going to open up this section down here. And so it's gonna allow a a large surface area in order to pull your vacuum or your recovery, or if you're just adding refrigerant or measuring the pressure. Now that we showed how the Cormax valve assembly works, if you have some type of a leak over here at the port, maybe due to like a copper shard or something like that stuck up against that uh, rubber grommet, I'm gonna show you how to replace this even if you have pressure in the system. In order to replace a Cormax valve assembly, you're gonna need this. It's the CM-CR tool, it's the valve core removal tool, and so, it has two sections right here. So it has this back section and the front section. And you can see right here, it will be able to grab a hold of this on the inside. So just like that. And then as far as this piece goes over here, it's able to grab a hold of the saddle down on the bottom. And so it's gonna take these two pieces. So now I'm gonna show you this on some pressurized tubing. Here we have our piping assembly and we're presently holding about 237 PSI. We have our Cormax valve installed into our saddle seat and that's mounted into the tubing here, here, and here. We have our nitrogen pressure right here valved off. And here we have our CM-CR tool. That's the valve core removal tool for the Cormax. And so this is going to seal right up against here and so it's going to hold itself in place and then we want to go ahead and push that down onto the Cormax and so I can I can feel that I'm holding right here now just temporarily we're going to have an adjustable wrench here so we don't want to keep this adjustable wrench here but we just want to hold it here just while we're just loosening basically breaking this the initial seal we do not want to accidentally press up on this because the whole thing could fly off so we want to make sure that this is down. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this counterclockwise. You want to also make sure that you're holding this handle down as you are turning this counterclockwise because you're going to have the refrigerant pressure, in this case it's nitrogen pressure, pushing up against the Cormax valve. And so I'm just going to keep turning this until I can kind of feel that the Cormax is out of the threading section. And I feel it now. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and turn this valve to the closed position. And there is our Cormax. So now that we've removed that, we're going to put our new one in. 
Now when we tighten this in, we want to open the valve because we want to make sure to purge any air that's in here out if this is refrigerant. And so now we can go ahead and open this up. Once again, you want to make sure that this does not get bumped during this procedure. And we can go ahead and push this in and turn it clockwise. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it decently. Now, before we just pull this off, we want to make sure that it's sealed. Okay, which it is. So we're good. Now you can use a torque wrench in order to tighten this down. It's 96 inch pounds. If you're going to do that, you want to make sure that you're holding this with an adjustable wrench. And so this one's specifically made to be torqued with this tool right here. And so as soon as I feel it kind of catching, I know that we are fully torqued down. After that's done, we just go ahead and place our, our cap, make sure we have an O-ring in it, and that's it. Now you see that we did lose pressure, but that's just because this is a small piping assembly. I hope this video helped, and if you're looking for more resources on HVAC, make sure to check out acservicetech.com and also our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures Air Conditioning book, and also our Inverter Mini Split Operation and Service Procedures book, both available over on Amazon and on our website at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.